and says, eat apples or like <laughs> apples. I don't remember that. Yeah, I, I don't remember that kind of stuff either because it reminded me of when you were talking. You were like, remember when L was all freaking out about the gods of death? That's why he was freaking out about the gods of death because he talked about it in the stupid notes. Maybe. That was it. Because no. Before then, L didn't even know about gods Look at L's eyes. There's no way that there's not some connection between L and, and but Shinigami. But look, he's like, are you saying that, uh, what do they call him? Shinigami. Shinigami exist? Question mark. That's when he started getting on it. And then after it, whenever he hears gods of death again, he's like, uh huh? Because it was written in those notes that L, uh, Kira uh, made him write down. See, we'll see. Because look at his eyes. There's something there. I'll bet money. Now, look, before he was talking about gods of death and he was all freaking out about it, and it, he yeah, didn't yeah, freak I, out. I what you said. Yeah. I just disagree. You didn't have the manga. I read it more recently you know what? than you. You know what? Look in at English. his eyes. Look at his eyes. His eyes aren't like that until after he's read those notes from Kira. No, his eyes are always that way. His eyes aren't like that. Oh, God, you're such a nut. <laughs> you always try to look into it so much to the point you know where what? you assume you know what? you're looking in is right, and it's never right, ever. Because it, it worked with Gundam Seed. I was right about almost everything except the one unpredictable Gundam Seed point. isn't like this. This yeah. is completely different. It, it does not logically follow that because you can predict one anime, you can predict every anime and manga yeah. there is. Plus, I'm still waiting for one character in Death Note who left... And I figured they would come back, and they didn't. And I'm curious about that. Yeah. I don't, like, we can't really talk anymore because I, a lot of people haven't read this. And I don't want to spoil it because it's one of the best manga I've read in a long time. It's, you know, I'm sure there's tons and tons of manga that are really awesome we haven't read. But I've read lots and lots of awesome manga, at least all the English ones. Yep. And this one's really awesome. Very good. And it sells out, so it, it's not just me. Hell, they have raws of it at Walden Books, yeah. so... Yeah, and they sell, I guess, kind of. Yeah, they sell well enough to keep having them. But something no one knows about. Yeah. Rocketo. Rocketo! Rocketo is so da, 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 awesome. Da, 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 da. And no one knows about it. Well, a few people know about it. it. It might be the most popular indie comic right now. Yeah, read Rocketo. It's printed sideways, so you'll see it, and you'll know what it I'm It looks like a about. comic book, but it opens at the bottom instead of the side. Well, I get, it's stapled at the top, so you flip it up, but you rotate the whole thing 90 degrees to read it. So it's wide. It's, it's like, like a, a land, it's landscape. Nine. Yeah. Landscape comic book. And it's and just it's, awesome. It's got this cool style of drawing. Well, it's like painting, kind of. And the characters are very awesome. There's not much I can say. You just got to read it. It's about this guy in like this other universe or world or whatever, and he's a navigator or mapper, a mapper, yeah. and he has like a compass in his hand, and the mappers are the only people who can know where they're going. And there's all these different races, like cat people and dog people and lizard people. And I still like that tiger guy from the first or second the tiger one. guy was definitely awesome, but in this one, there's a new kind of guy in issue three. is very awesome. Is that the guy you showed me a glimpse of? It's the guy I showed you a glimpse of. The guy I think is a bad guy. He's not a bad guy. He's got to be a bad guy. Nope. No one good looks that evil. Uh, oh, he's kind of good. He's he's pretty good. Uh -huh. He's definitely not a villain. Anyway, the whole thing is, is made by Frank Espinosa. At least he does all the art. And I think he writes it. But there's a co-writer, Mary Taylor. And there's a logo designer. And let's see. There's presented, whatever. President, you didn't do anything. Creative director, Chris Stone. I guess he did something. But those, it's really weird for an American comic to have so few people working on it. Huh. Usually a manga, like even Death Note, which is crazy, is made by two people. The story and the art guy. That's, that's, and that's unusual. A lot of times it's just one guy, story and art. You know? Like Akira, it's so huge, one guy. Yep. American comics, it's usually like writer, penciler, inker. Tracer. Tracer, yeah. <laughs> Actually, they're not really tracers, but it's like they separate all these things out because they have to produce it so fast, yep. and it's so with the crazy colors and the high productions. They need a lot of people to do it the American way, but you know, to do it in black and white, I guess you don't need so many people. But yeah, plus a lot, of, a lot of manga cards just kind of work at their own pace, and they come out whenever they finish them. Yeah, or they, well, they come out with very few pages, like weekly, when yep. in America they need to come out with like like twenty high quality pages monthly. You know, 
And it's not easy because they have editors like telling them what to do. Yeah. The manga guys just do whatever they want, really. Plus, the comics used to have the things like the comics code kind of crippling them. Well, but that's gone now. Yeah, luckily. Except for Archie Comics and a few, <laughs> few DC Comics still do the comics code. No one else. They don't cares anymore. Yeah, but Rocketo, it's it's like kind of a watercolor type of thing. It reminds me a lot of like fifties type sci fi. Only kinda with, like only Samurai Jack with less colors and less yeah. hard edges. Kinda. It's very soft and there aren't many hard edges at all. Yeah, it, but it's very awesome. It is. It is if you're not gonna read Death Note, at least read Rocketo. If you just go to the comic book store near you or an online comic book store or something. I mean, even if you don't want to buy, how many comic books is it going to be? Uh, doesn't know. I don't know how many it's going to be. Just buy the first one and read it. You'll get enough out of that to make it worth it. Yeah. I actually like the first volume the best. Compared, huh? you know, Even though volume three was real good and two was real good. It's it's all real good. <laughs> there'll be, I'm sure there'll be a trade paperback one day I'll buy and then give that to people. Yeah. Rocket O rules. Yep. No one knows about it except for really awesome people. But now everyone should know about it and read it. And tomorrow in our Netflix comes the final DVD of Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, which we had yet to see the end of. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the episodes that I hadn't seen yet were the ones that we just watched. And I love that show. It's a great show. It's a real good show. Compared to you know, and when you've been in such a drought of anime... It's good to have shows that were great that you didn't watch that you can fall back on. Yep. If nothing good comes out in the next few months, we're going to have to watch, like, Nadeshiko, which neither one of us have seen. Strangely. Yeah, it's really weird. We've seen, like, every anime. Except I ran a freaking one. anime club. You remember, like, the biggest anime club. We hung out. We spent whole weekends marathoning shows. Never saw Nadeshiko. Nope. We saw everything else. Yeah. But there's a lot of old shows that are great that we didn't see. What else do you have in our queue? We had the Z Gundam? Uh, Z Gundam. Yep. Uh... Last Exile isn't that old, but I always wanted to see Lost it. Exile, Last, Last Exile, Last Exile. Yeah. Who knows? I don't remember. But, yeah, we should see that. Yeah, Akino's Journey looks cool. Yeah, It looks like a little girly show. Yeah, of course, Gonku Tsubo is coming out. I'm going to buy all the DVDs because I love that show. Good. You only watch, like, a few episodes. I watched the first seven, and I loved them all. I think all. I watched, like, a little over half of the show and then stopped because I don't know what happened. If you've read the book, the unabridged Penguin Classics Count of Monte Cristo... Gonku Tsuo is a thousand times better to watch. Yeah, yeah, things like that, but whatever. It's still a fun show. It is. It's not the greatest, greatest show, but it was... The part that I got to is really cool, and then I stopped watching. I think because they stopped being available, or it left RIT, I don't know. Yeah, most of what makes the show great is that it's very pretty, and it's very stylized. Well, all the people that are important have those, like, magic clothes that they put on there. Yep. That's, what, that's what happens when Gonzo spends a lot of money on a show. Well, shows like that are right up my alley. I mean, my favorite freaking show is still Utena, which is the same kind of deal of stylized, pretty people. And but Utena was so cheap to make, and Gan Kutso was so expensive. It's completely different. Yeah, imagine if Utena were made as high production value as Gan Kutso was. It would be the same thing. It would yeah. just be better color in terms of like <laughs> looking like 2000 and not like 91 when it was made. Maybe the fights wouldn't just be like Utena and Toga standing there with like a silhouette of their swords going tsh, tsh. All right, all right, all right. Maybe that would change. Yeah. There'd probably be more choo-choo. That would be good. <laughs> Who could potentially be the only one Akio did not have sex with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know that for sure. <laughs> but that's the only one there's a chance. <laughs> He's the only chance. All right. Uh, are we done? I got nothing. Oh, oh, we're, we're going to keep our bit of telling a story? Oh, we should tell the story. What story should we tell today? Ron Jeremy. Ron Jeremy? All right, this is your story, so take it away, Scott. So, so my mom... When you, you turned your microphone off in the middle of the podcast. I bumped it by accident. I turned it back on. Ooh. You made the stupid click. Ooh. It's bad. So tell the story about Ron Jeremy and how you're his illegitimate son. I'm not his illegitimate son. You're, are you sure? I'm 100% sure. Okay. Do we need, if we get, uh, we'll do a DNA test if you really want to. I mean, sorry, am I fat? Do I look like Mario to you? <laughs> I mean, a penis might, might throw you off, but... <laughs> <laughs> But I, I can assure you, <laughs> it's not the case. Anyway, so one day I'm sitting with my mom. We're watching, um, what was that movie? Boondock Saints? I think he was the bad guy. Yeah, yeah, it was Boondock Saints. He's in it. For like a, he's a bad guy who gets killed. 
And uh, my mom's like, you see that guy? I'm like, what guy? And I'm like, you know, like the the cop, the, the detective guy. Well, William Defoe. I thought it was Willem. Without eh, Defoe. Yeah, 